So 2020 basically slapped us across the face, made us subject to the terror of coronavirus and Karens. Thanos snapped half the things we enjoy out of existence through social distancing guidelines and forced us to realize how racist people still exist in a pandemic. Hi, I'm a random person on the internet, and I'm about to explain the coronavirus and the upcoming vaccines to the best of my ability. But first, a big, big disclaimer. I'm by no means an expert on this situation. I am merely a person with a relatively stable internet connection and a computer with an interest in biochemistry, and I only want to explain stuff. So, if I'm wrong at any time in this video, please, please, please fact check me. Bash me in the comments. <laughs> I don't know. And with that, on to the video. So we got a virus boy, right? And this virus boy decided to pass on from an animal to a human and it went ricocheting off into the world and caused a pandemic. Everybody panicked. Wear your masks, wash your hands, clean the subway like you never have before. But the only real way to solve this whole thing is a vaccine, because apparently America doesn't understand a thing called social distancing. So a vaccine is a drug that you shoot into someone's immune system, and now the virus has to pay rent every time it tries to live in you. Or more realistically, it tries to move in, but now you're such a greedy landlord that you crush it into debt and kick it out. So when the virus comes along like, FBI, open up! Your T-cells are like, ha, sucker, we already know you, get out of here, be gone! And then you're safe, the virus doesn't infect you, and you don't get the sicko sad. Nice! Thanks, Edward Jenner. So coronavirus is this whole family of viruses. And this new one is from some animal and it jumped ship. It was swiping through virus tinder one day and saw our humble species, homo sapiens, and was like, you know what? I think I'm going to infect one of these kickers today. And through the power of its sonic speed of transmissions and also people being people and having interactions, it caused the pandemic and became a worldwide celebrity overnight. Specifically, this one is called COVID-19. Or if you want to get fancy, SARS-CoV-2 because it's from the same family of the virus that caused the SARS epidemic in the early 2000s. And it's back! But it's not the same, because it's scarier, more infectious, and a different strain. Coronaviruses are called coronaviruses not because of the beer, which is totally unrelated, but because it looks like a crown with all the spikes on it. And these spikes are proteins. And if you know me, I like proteins. I have a whole playlist of amino acids. The news has been talking about clinical trials and the percentage of efficiency of the vaccine, which is obviously very important, but epidemiology is not my thing. Go listen to Dr. Fauci for that. We love you, Fauci. In this house, we stand Dr. Fauci. Instead, I want to talk about the molecular side of things, like how it actually works from a biological point of view. On the surface of this virus, you have something called a spike protein. All of these are spike proteins, making it a pokey ball of death. If you squint hard enough, it almost looks like my cat when I don't feed her first thing in the morning. And it's the most important thing. The virus uses the spike protein to stab your cells and it Julius Caesars its way inside. Or more accurately, it Julius Caesars enemy style stabs its way into your cell. More scientifically speaking, it connects some proteins on the cell membrane until the proteins are like, okay sir, you may pass. Then the virus infects the cell and that is a big yikes because once the virus is inside, it hacks into the protein producing factories of the cell with its own genetic material and forces the cell to make more copies of itself and also damages the cell in the process. The vaccine is meant to prevent this Julius Caesar overthrowing. Vaccines are usually something inserted into the patient's body to cause the immune system to react to it and kill it, thus making the immune system immune to the actual threat. Usually it's something similar to the virus, like a dead version or bits and pieces of it chopped up, or a protein crucial to the virus's function, like the spike protein, for example. And then these enter the body, and the immune system's like, you're, you're not, not supposed, supposed to be here! And they crank out the antibodies, which is your body's ammunition against antigens. An antigen is any foreign particle. And then your body remembers these virus particles, so when the real virus tries to infect, they already got antibodies ready, which can recognize and attack the virus. They got that photographic memory of the virus's mugshot, and bam, the virus is dead, you're safe to carry on with your day, drinking Starbucks out of a styrofoam cup. Back to the spike protein. Other than the fact that it looks like a KFC drumstick that had been fried with a little bit too much batter, it plays a very important role because it's the main thingamajigger that allows the virus to actually enter the cell. Spike proteins interact with the cell membrane proteins, specifically the ACE2 receptor, which stands for angiotensin converting enzyme 2. And it operates in the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system pathway, otherwise known as RAS. <laughs> Why does science have to be so complicated? And this pathway regulates blood sugar and electrolytes in your body. TLDR, it keeps you alive by attaching to an enzyme called angiotensin 2. This enzyme increases inflammation and cell death in the alveoli, which are the little balloon sacs in your lungs that help you breathe. And ACE2 actually helps reduce this 
thereby helping you by grabbing the angiotensin 2 and going like, hey. Stop it. Get some help. So understandably, the coronavirus is very rudely intruding upon our ability to live by attacking our lungs. But you know, at least they have manners, because they knock before they enter our cells. And by knock, I literally mean they shove the protein in front of the ACE2 receptor and they're like, Here's Johnny! Now let me in! Here's how that actually happens. There's a bit of drama going on here. There's a spike protein, ACE2, and an enzyme called furin. So the spike protein is actually made of two parts, called subunit 1 and subunit 2. Let's call them twins. But since they're not identical, let's call them fraternal twins. And so subunit 1 is in love with ACE2 receptor. Subunit 1 is in charge of unlocking the ACE2 receptor, so it binds the ACE2 receptor. Not once, not twice, but three times! Like, even HIV doesn't do that, and HIV went the extra mile to go against the central dogma of biology. And this manipulative son of a non-human species inhibits the ACE2 receptor. In science, that means it stops it from working. This is understandably upsetting, as now our lungs are in danger. And I would like to breathe, sir, thank you very much. I'm telling you, the subunit 1 is extra and would do anything to get a date with ACE2. So now what the scientists found is that as the subunit 1 of spike protein binds to the ACE2 receptor in three different places, it begins to open up as a flower. In fact, the whole spike protein is referred to as a trimer because it has three pieces put together, each piece having a subunit 1 and subunit 2. So as it opens up, it looks like a tulip from the depths of pathogenic horror because it's about to chomp its way into your unsuspecting cell. Now this actually reveals a very special part of the spike protein in the S2 unit. Now the S1 is taken, S2 is revealed underneath. Now this S2 isn't looking to find a guy like AC2. No, 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 no. This S2 wants someone else. Specifically, an enzyme called furin. Furin is essentially a scissor because it's meant to cut other proteins. Usually this is meant to activate the protein for the benefit of our own body. In science, this is known as cleaving. But this time, the chopping ability of furin is used to allow the virus to get into the cell. So furin goes snip-snip on the S2, and once furin cuts away the subunit 2 part, the spike protein is referred to as its furin-cleaved form, as it has opened up its petals and has been cut. That's right! This mother hacker is going under different Pokemon evolutions like a molistic pathogenic Eevee for the sake of parasitically taking over our bodies. And the subunit 2 cuts to reveal something called a putative fusion peptide. A what? To break it down, putative means yes, somewhat known, we kind of think it's this thing. Theoretically, yes. Like it's, well, yes. But actually, probably. Essentially, it's tentative because research is still ongoing. Fusion means the purpose of this thingamajigger is to fuse the membrane of the virus and the cell together because that allows all the evil virus genetic material to get into the cell and hack it. And finally, peptide is just an unfolded protein, which is a string of amino acids. Essentially, it's squiggly molecular yarn. So putative fusion peptide basically means a peptide that causes fusion of the membranes, and we think that's what it does. Now, as you've noticed so far, science has a tendency to place fancy terms on things. So since putative fusion peptide is a mouthful and difficult to remember, let's just call this thing the forbidden Frankensteiner. Or how about merging squiggle? And from there, the two proteins are like, shucks, I guess I gotta let you in and they allow the virus in by fusing the membrane together, hence the fusion peptide. Kind of think of it like when two bubbles bump into each other, and then they combine to make one giant mega bubble. So that's the tale of a tragic love manipulation that enables the virus to maneuver its way into your body like TikTok has taken over the internet. Given this research, it's obvious that the vaccine should target the spike protein because it allows the virus to get into the cell and infect it in the first place. So now there's two big vaccines, at least that I know of, that are the hot new topics on the market. And they're quite revolutionary. One being the Pisver BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine, otherwise known as Tozinamurin. And the other one is by Moderna. These two are actually quite revolutionary because they aren't made with dead viruses like other vaccines. These are new and innovative, unlike my excuses for why I got onto my Zoom meeting late. They're actually mRNAs, which are single-stranded pieces of genetic material that specifically code for proteins. So these vaccines are evolving, just forward. And what's so amazing about this is that the mRNA codes for the spike protein, but not just the regular spike protein, a modified one. And the news keeps throwing around the term that it's encapsulated by a lipid nanoparticle, which is a very big brain thing to say, but unfortunately I have two remaining brain cells left after the events of this year. So really, it's just saying it's a sack of fat particles. But do you know what's also made of a sack of fat particles? That's right, the membrane. So this lipid nanoparticle thing 
can fuse with the membrane. So theoretically, the mRNA comes along, knocks down the door and says, Mate, I got some IKEA instructions for your very own build a protein. And the immune system recognizes it somehow. And it kicks in the same immune response as I described before. And so you get the same result, which is antibodies that fight crime. Well, that's the idea. I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know if I got anything wrong because coronavirus is a new and evolving thing that has a lot of research going into it. And thanks for watching.